2004, so I've been at it for a long time. And what you see on the right hand of the screen is what you would call three different ways to represent the location. The one at the very bottom is the full address of where we are right now, and the one above it is the latitude and longitude, and then a number, an integer, which can be converted to latitude and longitude, or three words, or three geonames. So, let's talk a bit about... Um, let's see. Oh, there you go. Location codes. Um, there is probably, as you know, many ways of representing location, not just with latitude and longitude, but uh, there is uh, the very famous geohash algorithm, for example, uh, that is used by a lot of people in the open community. There is map codes, there is plus codes, the Google version of that, which is now integrated with Google Maps. And there is a bunch of others, some commercial, some free, that try to address this very problem. So let's step back a moment and see what is an address code. It's the ways we have come up with to re uh, talk about locations. So we have created them in a sense. Uh, we just need a way to communicate to other people where we are. So here is where we are right now. And as you see, the problem here is that there is many permutations of how we can represent a location. Um, because Brussels, of course, is a bilingual, trilingual city, and that problem exists in many other places. So people who build location systems point out this very problem, that we cannot just rely on addressing systems, human build addressing <coughs> systems, to represent a location with both on, on ambiguity and um, this is one of the reasons that they work on this area to come up with a better solution. So what I'm going to present is uh, a hashing function for locations which takes into account not just latitude and longitude but also the uh, existing uh, geographical information about the place. So it's just a function of latitude and longitude plus three geonames, which will give us uh, a new code. Or, uh, let's call it geocode. I guess nobody else has used that name yet, so I might as well use it for myself. So what are the use cases? Uh, as you know now, uh, automated vehicles are coming along, and uh, pretty soon we'll need to do uh, voice geocoding systems. So basically, we need to shout a location across the hall or something like that. So we need to have a geocoding system that is unambiguous and can be uh, communicated uh, via audio. There is also the problem of postcode systems. There is some countries with good postcode systems, others that don't have postcode systems. But even those that do, and in the area where I'm from, uh, Canada, for example, it happens that Sometimes emergency services go to the wrong location because of the ambiguity in the street names. Here was a, if you click on the link, there was a, a story recently about the firefighters going to the wrong house and two poor dogs and a cat dying as a result uh, because Google Maps sent them to the wrong location. And this happens with high frequency. Uh, high frequency, I'll say. 90% of the time they could be accurate, but the 10% of the time is very high cost. Um, and there's also indoor navigation problems that need to be solved, and they can also be solved either by uh, figuring out a way to name locations, let's say, inside the mall uh, by using the names of the stores and uh, in, a, in a more intuitive, human-friendly way. So what is my system uh, main attributes? Uh, well, it has to be free. Uh, there is a couple of systems that are not free, as you will know, and um, they rely mostly on the marketing to get these systems into wide adoption. And Google being in the dominant position, of course, they can just integrate it with Google Maps and say, okay, everybody use this now, and that's the end of that. Um, but the system has to be free. Down the road, uh, only such a system will get wide, wide use without any marketing effort. And it has to be short, obviously. We need to be able to find the optimal location code. 
uh, it has to preserve the latitude and longitude of spatial information. So we're basically mapping 2D points into one dimension. And it has to be somewhat memorizable for people to use them. Uh, and it has to be unique, uh, which is a feature many systems don't have. Even the popular geohash function doesn't have this. Um, and last but not least, it has to be able to be generated offline without on, uh, internet access and without a database. So at least this is my main requirement. The, there are a few others, but we'll go to that later. Um, so as far as free, you can just go on GitHub and download the source code and the uh, word list, uh, list over there. And as far as short, you can judge by yourself. Of course, latitude and longitude is not very long. However, it's hard to remember because they seem like a bunch of random numbers. Um, if you click on this one, I don't know if I have linked it, but you can go back. So I've built an API. It's called api 3 And you just basically give it latitude and longitude and it gives you all this information. So it's basically the poor man's reverse geocoding engine. Um, so you can either represent this, lo this location as Brussels, Bot, Shoy. Sorry. Oh. Can you use the mic, please? Sure. And in this arrangement of every location, the first word, the first name, is always representative of the place. So we are in Brussels, that's why that is the first one. Uh, the other two, though, are not related to the location in question. And uh, let's go back. <clears throat> and I have built also like an acronym, acronymized extension, which takes these geo names and shortens them further. Well, I'm having a hard time with this. <laughs> I'll hold it. So uh, basically, Los Angeles is shortened to LA, as people intuitively know, or uh, Brussels is to BRU. So it's just another layer on top of the system that you can use to even to make the location names even shorter. And uh, uh, as far as special locality goes, um, obviously, as like I said. Uh, in the three geo name version, they always share the first word. Uh, 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 let's say this place is close to Halifax, so Halifax will be the first one. But the, the other two are quasi random in order to enable us to avoid errors in the transmission, in the transmission of the locations. But as you can see, equivalent geo codes of these are completely different, of this point and that point, although they are only one meter apart. So so a special locality has to take care of this. Also, um, if you were going to use like a long code like this, it will share most of the significant digits. Or if you're going to uh, build a three name code, then it has to share the first word. <coughs> now, as far as memorizable, that's debatable well, as to what people can remember easily. I find it easier to remember this, Brussels, we'll try this as, as I can remember this one that is uh, Google Plus code, equivalent of that, or uh, uh, this is the three, uh, uh, what three word version of that, and this is the, the GeoHash. <coughs> as, uh, as far as unique, it, it has to be unique both ways. And as you know, this is another problem with the popular geohash algorithm. Um, because geohashes such as this and that, they all, they all decode to the same point, which is this one here. So we have to avoid this problem moving forward. <coughs> um, deterministically speaking, you can just uh, get the code this written in Perl. It's on CPAN. And you use it in that way, you just embed it into your system, and you don't need a database or anything else. You just install it on your laptop, and you're good to go. 
And like I said, I have an API. Uh, I think I, I click through to it. So the API is free, and it runs on a, um, uh, well, there is a little bit of documentation, not much. But this is very simple, so why, why go any further into detail? Um, the API is free. It's running on a micro instance on Amazon, so it doesn't cost me anything for a year. Um, as you know, Amazon has these nice specials about uh, one gigabyte uh, memory and one CPU. Um, but it can only handle about 100 requests per second. If you do more, it might crash the server. So if you are so inclined, you can also get your own server on Amazon because there is an image there that you can launch your own machine with over there. And it looks kind of like this. And as far as cloud performance, like I said, it could do 100 to 200, but it depends, and I'll get into a little bit why this difference in the performance. Uh, it depends on the point. Sometimes if you have a point that is like in the middle of Brussels, it's faster to reverse geocode it than a point that is in the borders. And uh, uh, I don't want to go too much into the algorithm, but the algorithm is uh, just uh, relying on partitioning the, the earth into a grid and they use a skip list data structure to name each one. <clears throat> so for example, you can shorten them, let's call them geopolygons, and this is the location somewhere in the Pacific close to the 108th meridian, and you will get poly simple polygons such as this one of about 21,000 square kilometers. And you can shorten it further and you get something like this. <clears throat> So unlike many uh, systems that I've seen, these polygons are not, in a sense, squares or uh, pentagons or hexagons or whatever. They're kind of the way the mathematical function that uh, guides their, their generation, it just come, makes it so that it's simple polygon if you have only one word. It's a convex polygon if you have two words. Otherwise, and in the last, uh, state is just uh, one meter by one meter square. So it's a resolution of one meter. And this is where we are right now. And this is one of the problems with this naming system. Uh, there is locations, there is a place in Tirana where I'm from, uh, Albania, it's called Krap. So you will have a location called Brax, Brussels, or oh, Krap. Um, and is that there? However, what can we do about dirty words? <laughs> they exist. <laughs> um, that's why this is open source, and if you don't like these words, uh, these names, you can replace them with your own. Um, I just came up with this for a very good reason, because I want the names to be distinct from each other, to have good Levenstein distance, so when we shout them across the hall, they are not mistaken for a different uh, name. But uh, people are free. To, to tinker with it. There are some considerations. There is a lot of, uh, there is 658, uh, almost 659 trillion latitude and longitude points if you limit them to the fifth decimal point, which accounts for one meter of resolution. So you need around 150,000 geonames to, to get the system to work. Um, like I said, I have two versions of the code. One is at one meter and one is at 10 meters, and I'll get to it very quickly why I do that. Uh, see, when I do the reverse geocoding, I need to have like overlapping polygons to make sure that something on the border doesn't get mischaracterized. Uh, so that's why I have two systems laying on top of each other to solve this problem. And <clears throat> um, I, my, main, my main goal for building the system in the first place is not location encoding per se. I don't really care much about building a geohash, but I wanted to build a faster uh, reverse geocoding algorithm. So pointing polygon queries are very fast when you use number ranges. Let's say from that number to that number is the numbers that represent all the locations inside Brussels. So when you are looking at it, uh, you can have a constant expected time complexity, which is 90% of the times. But if you are 
close to the edges, then you probably, in the worst case, you go to uh, logarithmic uh, time complexity, which is acceptable, but this way you get a much faster reverse geocoder than if you were to use some other technique. <coughs> um, just a quick recap. Um, there are two, uh, two different codes that I've come up with. One is called the three geonames, based on geonames. They are open, they are free, and I don't think anybody can copyright that. Uh, like, uh, and there, there is the, the, the second option, which is one geoname and an alphanumeric string uh, no longer than five digits that represents a 10 by 10 uh, meter cell. As far as navigation, the second one would be working just fine as well, but people want the highest resolution and one meter by one meter is, I think, more than sufficient. Um, <clears throat> uh, there is some other attributes, of course. Uh, this uses um, uh, the Hilbert curve for uh, obtaining best location proximity and it's really fast because we're just flipping bits. Uh, and there is a combination that I use the Hilbert curve with the, the z-order curve to get this overlapping, uh, uh, this overlapping arrangement. And there are no discontinuities, even at the 180 meridian, uh, as you can, if you can uh, go to the website. Uh, maybe uh, if I have time, I don't know how much time I have, I can give you a quick demo. Uh, okay, I have another 15 minutes, which is great. Um, so basically, uh, you can solve this problem on, on, the, on the dateline, and it's extendable. Now, um, the process is mostly CPU intensive, so, so if you go and, and, and use a minimal instance, it will work fine, but uh, you, can, you can scale up to 200 million points a day on uh, 24 cores. So. Uh, memory is a factor too. Uh, the data comes from open places like GeoNames and OpenStreetMap, and there is 12 million of them. But you can easily fit that into one gigabyte of, of RAM, no problem. And even if you grow the RAM, it will not make a difference. But CPU is important to to get more throughput on this system. Um, um, so there are some to-dos. I haven't gotten around to um, to other languages. Um, it is uh, I thought about doing it before I came to this presentation to just get the geonames, uh, other uh, alternate names field and to just uh, produce a couple of options, but I'll let other people uh, tackle the problem if they, if they feel so inclined. And as far as error correction, you could also, uh, what I've built is, uh, See, each of these 150,000 words has a certain uh, edit distance, both uh, au on audio, in the audio sense and uh, in the character sense, from, from each of every, every other ones. So basically, I've picked my uh, geonames carefully to, to have them as distant as possible. But you can modify this algorithm to get them even more distant from each other. But bear in mind that uh, in order to keep the words short, you have to put up with a distance of one. Otherwise, you will end up with long words if you want to get longer and longer distances and these things to be more and more distinct for each other. All right, so... Ha. Um, I still believe that like, encoding geographic coordinates, it, it's very trivial. I mean, come on, it's just... Um, have you seen this movie, uh, The Hot Sucker Proxy? It's one of my favorite movies. And, and this guy here is, uh, just came out of business school and he said, look, I've invented the circle. And, uh, and it became an instant commercial hit because he invented the hula hoop. And uh, it, it, it's trivial, right? But there is many companies that are, are building business models uh, around this. And a lot of people in the OpenStreetMap community, for example, are really annoyed with companies like Open, uh, uh, like Watery Words or Zipper who are trying to copyright word lists and uh, getting people to use their system to, to find latitude and longitude. But uh, you don't have to be mad about that. Just uh, try to make it better and try to make it work and improve, uh, improve of those, on those things. And without further ado, I think I have a few minutes. I just, before I go to questions, there is a, 
a website I put up. <clears throat> well, it defaults to that, but uh, I should uh, come back to where we are. So let's say you can. <clears throat> this is both a reverse geocoder and a geo uh, and an encoding system. Sorry, I clicked to the wrong one. So uh, basically, you get that. You get this uh, Brussels ah Lanco. At least it's not crap. Well, crap is the next meter of. <laughs> so if I. <laughs> If I was like sitting, well, I don't know how geolocation works on this thing, but uh, you know what I mean. And and there are three three options. You can either represent it like this, or as a string, alphanumeric string, or as uh, both a name and a little string at the end of that. And of course, you can also go to the API and uh, check it out over there. So. That's pretty much what I had to say. Just go and one more thing. When you go <coughs> to to this, you can also use uh, control copy. You can, instead of latitude and longitude, you can also use like the number mm -hmm. of that location. Whoops. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm trying to copy and paste this thing. All right. <coughs> Uh, not having any luck. I forgot how to copy and paste. Oh, there you go. So if you add a dot .json in the end, especially many JavaScript programmers like this, they just get that. And uh, or you can put the the three G name version here. So. Like this, and it's the same thing. So <laughs> that's it for now. Um, let me know if you have any more questions. We have about seven minutes left. Questions? Yeah, of course, that's the underlying, uh, uh, well, it's a function that trans transfers latitude and longitude to a single number. So it's basically using the Hilbert curve uh, to, to have this number sequential. So let's say two latitudes and longitudes that are close together, uh, here and the chair over there, would have very close dual numbers, like different by one number or two. It's part of the open source, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Hilbert curve is open source. There's other implementations of Hilbert curve that could do the, exactly the same thing. Yeah. Anyone else, please? Why do you want a unique geocode for your location? Why do I want a unique? I don't know. <laughs> I thought it would be, right, as a mathematician, I think, uh, one to one functions are, are better than uh, things that are less predictable than that. Like, I want to be able to say that I'm ex at exactly this uh, unique code as opposed to I could be at this or that or those other ones. <laughs> I thought it would be a good requirement. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You can remove that requirement if you like. Sorry? Um, oh, yes. Um, I can probably show you. Um, see, geocode.xyz, it's a reverse geocoder, basically. This is why I build it. So right now, if I go to uh, Cloudflare, there's about, well, no, not this one. There is about, um, let's see. There you go. Oh, for some reason, it's not, I'm not logged in. But um, there's about 100 million uh, requests for, uh, for month on this API. But people don't usually use it for the geocode themselves. They just want to use a reverse geocoding engine for, for uh, fleet tracking, for things like that. Yeah. I wonder if the same idea could be extended to also include elevation data. 
example, for, I don't know, for drone navigation mm -hmm. or for multi-story buildings? You mentioned the in-store location, actually. Mm -hmm. but what do you think about that one? Uh, yeah, th I, I think the, the GeoHash 36 algorithm has a feature that they include ele elevation as well. I've looked into it. It's easy to add it to this one, but I'll need to add another byte to the length of the code to be able to encode uh, elevation as well. Yes, in uh, general, I think about the third dimension. That is very important, especially people who you do drone delivery. Uh, they want to have this feature embedded into that so they can also encode the elevation as well as the latitude and longitude. It's totally possible. Like, the Hilbert curve was built not just to transfer two dimensions into one dimension, it can transfer three dimensions into one dimension in the same okay. easy way. Just the number will be a little bit longer. That's all. Regarding the Hilbert curves, do I have it wrong in mind that there are some, well, some jumps in it? If we go into a certain direction, um, just a little bit, then you, you get completely different values in certain cases, but, but not that many. No, uh, Hilbert curve is much better than the Z order curve, which is what the GeoHash algorithm uses. The uh, orbit curve is, is much easier because you're just interleaving the bits, uh, and it's simpler to implement. The Hilbert is a little bit more complicated, but it does preserve uh, location proximity much better than that. Well, Hilbert is better than piano code, I, I, because uh, Hilbert was based on piano code. It was an improvement over that. But uh, uh, from what I've seen, and I, I use two different, and, uh, I use both Z-order and Hilbert curve on top of each other. So when there are some things that are bad on one of them, I correct it by the other one. So as far as reverse geocoding goes, I don't think I'll miss anything by using them both in uh, superimposed on each other. Thank you. The tides? I mean. The tides, yeah. Sometimes there is land and sometimes there is not because of the, of the tide, because of the water. Oh, I see. Um, see, I haven't really bothered much with, uh, uh, with taking into account a temporary, temporal uh, displacements. Okay. Like this. Basically, I just get a latitude and longitude and convert it to a number and that number into a code. Uh, you know, there is Australia is moving with uh, yeah. one meter, uh, what meter, one meter in uh, ten years or something. So I don't deal with that. Okay. Like uh, as the latitude and longitude will move <laughs> with Australia, so you, it will be a different code in a few years from now. But I mean, yeah. Since you're using like, the first part of the one of the two options, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. Is a, a location like a well-known name of a location inside the, the polygon? Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's always like that. For example... So considering that, that uh, question, mm -hmm. if Australia moves up, at one point, like, is, is this location, does it move with Australia as well? Or at one point, will Sydney something something be in the ocean? <laughs> That's not far in the future, but I mean... Uh, that is a very good question. And uh, you're right? No way. Um, uh, Australia will, uh, in, uh, in about uh, 100 million years, <laughs> this will no longer be relevant. <laughs> um, because that's why somebody needs to, to update it. <laughs> because uh, these numbers are assigned to cities as, a, as they are today. And then you have the na main name, but then they will ch if you change, everything is off. Okay, that was the last question. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, to, uh, up, uh, get his presentation done. Yes, you are Fisarian. Are you Fisarian? No, 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 no. I'm just asking a question. Is Fisarian Hello. present? I'm here. 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 I'm